Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name's Samantha. I play Laura Greyvale, a sorcerer from Nefalia. Hello, I'm Colin Robinson and I play Cuin de Greymont, a paladin from Gavany. Hi, I'm Ryan and I play Ogvar, a ranger from Kessig. In our previous episode, our adventurers had followed the crumb trail of clues through the city to an apothecary. They have learned some incredibly important information about Katerina from a friend. Finally, armed with some solid new Nefalian leads, they can plan the progression of their quest. Episode 10, Sea Storms and Sanctuary. Right, so yeah, you head off towards the church and it's probably about, after doing all your shopping, it's probably about... Three o'clock in the afternoon now. So you head off up towards the church. Right? Yep, fine. I'm going to turn to Ogvar as we're walking and um, I'm going to just um, I'm gonna say to him, I bought us something. And I'm just going to reach his army backpack and I'm going to just waft it under his nose, this packet of coffee, and then I'm going to put it back in my backpack again. Mm. Well, that's most good. Yes. I, know, I know what we can do with that. Well, we've got the mugs, we've got the percolator, but we didn't have the coffee, so I'll put that right. Mm. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> um, right. Off to the church. Off to the church. Off to the church. Well, that's going to be a bit of a, right. a walk Actually, up, isn't it? If is it steps or is it just a, a gradient, a really steep gradient? It's up? a hill. To go round? Well, to yeah. spiral round the hill to go up? No, it's, it's just a long drag. Okay. I need to talk to you two, did that. Oh, yes. Maybe we can talk on the way up the drag. No, it's not. It's something... It's, it's secret. It's not really something we want to... Oh. Well, we've got, a cho- we can, we've got a choice. We can, You can talk while we're going up the drag, or we can stop partway up the drag and you can talk to us or whatever. That, I'll leave that to you. I'm not... Find a puddle somewhere, I suppose. Confession box. So we're going to start walking towards the base of the hill yeah, that traffic, leads up to the church. Traffic is a lot thinner in this area because there's it's more like the rich district the trading offices on this massive chunk of rock and the church itself it's a quiet area there's not much going on so are there po- are there some posh taverns on there is there a posh tavern along yeah there's a couple of very posh taverns right so we're just walking along then okay mm-hmm. uh, 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 do you mind if we just have a quick stop quick drink I, I think I need to explain to you a bit more about what this is all about I think that's a really good idea I didn't want to push it but at the end of the day if I've been dragged out of my work with Casper for this purpose I, I can't really help unless I've got all the information that I need okay. are you saying this is your starting off walking um, we're heading towards the bottom of the hill but we're going to obviously pass a tavern before we go. That's, right, okay. that's what he was sort of yep, okay, indicating. No, yep. right, let, let, let's, let's just pop in here. To the, the, there's a tavern. I think we should see. See, it, it doesn't look too busy, but if we're just going and have a drink, and so I can explain to you a few things. Is that, that that's that's okay with you? Yeah, it's fine. It looks like a decent tavern. Oh, okay. great. Okay. You walk out, this, this tavern itself, it's very tidy looking. It's not as fancy as some of the other taverns, but it's very tidy looking outside. There's some nice flowers in the window boxes. It's called the Clipping Pony. When you walk in, it is fairly empty. Uh, there's some people in there, there are some customers in there. They're not particularly rich looking, they're not particularly poor looking. Um, they just seem to be in there for a nice drink. Right, I'm going to... I'm going to go walk up to the... Uh, right, 
Okay, who wants a drink? I think we need to sort this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, look, uh, three ales? Yes, yes, please. Oh, uh, that'd be very nice, thank you very much. So I'm going to walk up and ask. Hello? Anyone there? There's already someone waiting for oh. you when you get up there. Okay, uh, 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 how much is the ale, please? Seat at this point. Yeah, we'll wander up. We'll wander Is across. Is there any the... like little alcoves sort of There's out the way? There's one in the back corner. Yeah, so yeah. we'll we'll make our way towards that alcove out Fine. the way. Fine, I'll follow Ogva. Okay, and the gentleman behind the bar, he says, "Yeah, sure. We've got ales. We've got ales all sight. We've got Dragon Bite Bitter. We've got Stout Stout. What would you like? Dragon Bite Bitter, please." Okay, uh, three lots of that was it? Yes. Uh, how much is that, please? Gold piece for the three. Okay, no problem. It's probably cheaper than what I was usually charge you for the cheap ale, probably. But can't remember what I charged you, so I'm going with it. He goes, right up then. And he goes, probably like, she rips you off, it's fine. Um, <laughs> he pours three, they are quite reasonable, they're not, they're not the biggest tankers you see, but they're tankards. And he pops them on the counter in front of you, takes your money, and he goes, right, have a good drink. Thank you. Right, so I'm going to walk over. Uh, right, here you go. Oh, thank you very much, Kia. Uh, thank you, thank you. Do you win? While we're sat, while we're sat here, I'm I'm busy telling um, Ogvar about what I was doing in the wool shop and about well, wool shop in the, in the you know the haberdashery material wool shop and um, just discussing with him why I was getting a little cloak made. Have you have you showed it to me? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to get that out. I'm going to show this mini cloak. I'm going to just recount the tale that I was having a bit, a bit of trouble with the old lady because she, she was a bit hard of hearing, you know. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't the easiest conversation. OK. Uh, no, she was perfectly nice, but, yeah, a bit strange. Are you happy with the product? Yeah, it looks all right to me. I've got a free pin with it. So. Oh, well, excellent. <laughs> Something I else to... did consider it might have been for, for Rowan when you brought it out. Oh, Rowan, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, he's he's quiet in there, at which point I'm, I'm going to get Rowan out and just sit him on the table, wake him up and prod him a bit and just say, come on, Rowan. He's flat on his back and you're just kind of poking his I'm stomach. poking it. Come on, Rowan, wake up. I'm going to stick my finger in my ale, in, in, my, in my bitter, and I'm just going to just drop some, see if he's interested in it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, does, does Rowan have any? <laughs> yeah. He... <laughs> I'm going to do a bit more because I'm laughing now and just... Uh, Are you getting your bat chunk? <laughs> constitution check for the bat. There's <laughs> a theme here with you getting people drunk. <laughs> you keep going, you're going to need to make one. <laughs> She's like, no, just give him a li- little bit more. She's like, come on, Rowan. It's, it's actually really good. I'm going to try a bit and clink my glass back down and like, my, my mug back down and tankard, whatever it is, and, and, and just, you know, generally just tickle him. I give him a tickle, play with him and say that. Yeah, he's this is, ah, he's cute, isn't he? This is Rowan. If you've not really met him up close, this is Rowan. No. He's really cute. Then you let him out of a few windows and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I have to let him out at night. He kind of feeds himself, though, you know. It's pretty good. I mean, sometimes I give him a bit of fruit, um, you know, if I've got a bit spare. And, but, you know, he's sleepy during the day, as you'd expect. And, you know, I suppose I'd better put him back in me. I'll pick him up and put him back in there. He seems to be fine. Hick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a constitution save for the bat. Constitution save for my bat. He didn't have that much. He's a bat. Well, yeah, but he only had a few drops. Oh, God. Um, it's a nat one. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a drunk bat. I've got a nat one. So it's fallen off his perch inside my cloak. Yeah. Okay, so I feel this thud by my leg. I was like, what's that? <laughs> Open my cloak. Oh, Rowan, I only gave you a few drops. God, what's the matter with you? So I picked him up, and I, I'm going to have to just... I'll have to put him in my pocket, because he can't hang on on his own. I mean, maybe you should just leave him on the table so you can see what he's doing. Oh, OK, then. So I take him back out of my pocket, and I leave him on the table. Just let him sober up. I can't believe that. I only gave him a couple of drops, you know? Just... Oh, yeah, well, that's pets for you. <laughs> Kiri's probably not that impressed at this point. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> 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 I don't know what you're on about, Kieran. Um, well, you know, I had that little episode in... Uh... Well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Have you seen a doctor? Did you go and see somebody about that? Yeah, at the OK. In. At the where? Cracked acorn in. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I seem to remember you had a it is, bit it of a it's thing. It's funny how it all seems to revolve around you. What are you trying to say? Ah, uh, you need to get a sense of humour, Kieran. I've spent a lot of time on ships around a lot of blokes, and you know, you just, and I've got two younger brothers, and well, you know what, it wasn't exactly a girly girly upbringing, you know, so it was always rough and tumble with them, and well, I guess I've always just, you know, that's why my mum and dad weren't really bothered when I, you know, they weren't worried about me when I went off doing my own thing. I can look after myself. I'm just going to keep tickling Rowan. Come on, Rowan. He's squeaking and hiccuping and <laughs> making general bat sounds. <laughs> bat sounds like. Uh, look, Kieran. He's drunk. Yes. Oh, yeah, I know. He's cute, feeling. though, isn't he? <laughs> Yes, well, but, uh, he's all fairy. Yeah, you know, we'll just have to keep an eye on him. He'll be fine. Right. <clears throat> well, I, I suppose it's time to uh, fill you in on exactly what's going on. I, I've not filled you in before because I'm under strict instructions by Mikos, the my Ludak. Um, I've been given the t tasks, as you know, to sort out Siegfried's alchemical notes that were in Katrina's Brun's journal. Oh, it's Brun. Katrina Brun. Right, oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it's all to do with this strionic resonate. Um, oh, right, all we had was rionic, wasn't it? So it's a, it's a what? Uh, it's a strionic resonator? It's a strionic, yes. yes. Uh, um, OK. What, what do you think that is? Is it... Uh, is it she did, uh, the Karina did say that uh, Katrina was a, was a great musician. Could be an instrument. Yeah, uh, we believe it's a tool to... Okay. Uh, uh, hold on. Let's just get this as, as, as I understand it, and then we can confer. Basically, the Archangel Avacyn uh, appears to be sealed inside the Halvond. Really? Yes. Uh, we've tried to keep this from the public knowledge so people don't worry yeah i can see that that'd be a problem but yes. things are starting to degrade so we katrina was tasked to try and discover uh, uh the secrets of the strionic resonator which is believed to be uh, uh the key to releasing obviously um from helva but unfortunately uh, as we are looking for her. Kat Katerina, uh, unfortunately, Katerina, as you know, disappeared. Um, she's gone missing, and that's why we're looking for her. Um, all we have are her notes and this journal. Uh, and as you know, you know, this single piece of paper with the f three words, which we are following. And we need to decode these signals or ciphers or whatever it is that she's written down to try and release a angel um so you believe that this code is the key to the release of the archangel and this resonator is something to do with it as well that's all we've got basically i mean, I mean without actually having katarina here we don't know but the, these codes are all that we have with this piece of paper to try and find. We believe that she hit on something, um, and that's probably why she's disappeared. Okay, so we have Siegfried's alchemical notes, but who is Siegfried? Uh, I believe he was her husband. Oh, and he's not around either? No, he was killed. Oh, okay. Um, right, so Siegfried was killed, he left some notes. And then she presumably took on where he left off? No. No? They worked together? Yeah, in a sense. They were part of a pair, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, the way I believe it, I believe they worked together to try and sort Fig this... Figure out how the out. resonator yes. worked. Yes, right. but unfortunately he was killed and, and now she's gone missing, so hence we are... And the resonator is the key to releasing the Archangel Abyssin? We believe so. Oh, right, OK, this starting to make a bit more sense now. Yeah, I, 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 all, the, all the way through, obviously, I, I am really sorry for not totally divulging what's going on, but as, I, as we've gone, I, I've really 
started to understand your characters and you see him and the way you, you are. I believe it's about time that I told you as much as I know because uh, it's the things that are jumping out are just, we need to be together. And I've taken it on myself to decide that's it. I'm telling you, even though I was told to tell you the bare minimum, I think it's time. It, it, it was time. At this point, I'm going to pick up my tankard. I'm going to pick up Rowan Atkinson, and I'm going to give him a bit of a shake and see if he'll hang back on his little hook inside my cloak. Yeah, just about. Yeah. I'm just going to check. Close my cloak. I'm going to pick up my tankard, take a long, deep swig, bang the tankard back down and say to him, well, we'd better get started then, hadn't we? Yes, all I can do is totally apologise, but as you can see, I've been in a really tight quandary. Yeah, I understand, Kieran. It's, yeah. We're all on the same page now, so... That's fine. Well, I guess we're going to have to... Well, let's look at what we know. So, oh, OK, we, we, we now know that she's been here. We know that she bought a new journal. Um, so... Although where that is, I don't know. Um, and a friend hasn't seen her since, so we're a couple of months behind the game, aren't we? Yes. Um, and then, well, that, we, the next port of call is going to be the church, isn't it, here? Yes. yes. And then we've got some other leads to follow up further down the coast. But that's, you know, I have had a look at the map, and that's, poof, that's, that's a good week, at least, a week's, you know, travel from here. So we need to conclude what we need to conclude here first. I mean, we may come back at a later date, maybe, but we, we do need to investigate everything here first. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just thought it would be time to share what... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, okay. Right. OK. I reckon we drink up and we go up so we went to, to the, the church. We entered at 3pm. How much time has passed? It's probably taking you about an hour to kind of slowly digest this, so it's okay. probably about 4 o'clock. 4pm 4 out, the, out the boozer. Yeah. So it'll be starting to get dark shortly, won't it? Yes, but this is obviously a city, it's well lit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, OK. I vote we go up to the church then. Drink up and yep. literally go up to the church. OK. Right, uh, I know we, we have the information about the church, and we really should go there, but, you know, it's 4pm, you know... Do you reckon we should uh, go now, or do you reckon maybe spend the night and try again in the morning, straight to the church? Yes, uh, I think uh, an evening in the tavern would be a good idea. Well, yes. Approach it with a, with a fresh head in the morning. What do you think, Laura? Yeah, I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um... Do you think we should, do you want to stay in this tavern, or do you want to go back round and stay where we were staying before? Or this one's a little bit more well, it's a little bit more upmarket, isn't it? I think we're on that side of town. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, no problem staying here. Yes, let's let, let's stay here. It does seem quite a nice place. So, yes, yes. Let's go back in then. Okay. Right, so we'll we'll go back into the tavern um, and perhaps walk up to the bar. Um, I think uh, well, should we should we book ourselves some rooms uh, and get a bit of something to eat? Well, it's a bit early for dinner, isn't it? Um, well, everything's still open outside, but go and have a walk around and see what what else what else is in town, and then we could always come back here in a bit and have something to eat. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, stash some air clothes and uh, spare belongings in the room. And... Yeah, it's fine, we'll do that. So I'm going to walk up to the bar and, um, I don't know, just, 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 is there anybody at the bar? Is there anybody behind the bar? Yeah, the young lad who was uh, serving earlier, he's still there. Um, hi, can we, um, we've decided we'd like to get some rooms. Is, is that possible? Yeah, sure, let me just check the books. So he wanders over and he has this big, heavy um, tome and he flips it open and he flips to it, flips to the right date and he takes his little piece of charcoal and he runs his name down the list and he goes, oh, I'm terribly sorry, we're fully booked today. Oh, 
Mm. Right. Oh, right. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'm going to turn to Ogvar and the other and just say, well, yeah, that, okay, so that's not going to work. So do you want to go back to the other tavern? We've got to get somewhere to stay, surely. Uh, maybe this young gentleman could recommend another tavern. Yeah, can you recommend somewhere else? Uh, well, I'm not supposed to. The boss might have a bit of a go, but um, if you carry on past all the rich noble houses, down past where the uh, path is up to the church, you keep on going that way, you'll find one soon enough. OK, all right, thanks very much then. So I'll turn, start and go back and go out the uh, out of the tavern and back out onto the street. OK. Um, I'll follow as well. Everyone make me a wisdom check, please. 16 all in. Start as you mean to go on. Laura's got a six all in. Three all in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's, make, it's making me feel better. <laughs> okay, so as you're walking outside... You're walking down the road towards the south, uh, going past this promontory and the path up to the church. And Ogvar, you get a feeling, and you can't put your finger on it, but it's almost as if the atmosphere has changed. Okay. Uh, if you want to make me a couple of uh, a spot check, please. B, an 11. Okay. You kind of, you almost pause for a minute in the middle of the road and you can feel that the wind has changed since the hour you've been in the tavern and it's now kind of whipping harshly through the streets and at this moment as you pause you take a look around and uh, the vendors and shops which had been kind of lying the edge, all these shop mm-hmm. fronts, they are shut up, they've been closed you know, there are bits of um, parchment flipping around from flyers which have just been left and they're kind of almost swirling in the eddies of the wind and floating off elsewhere. Okay. The lanterns and street lights almost round the round you now, they don't usually get lit. From the night when you entered and you spent the night here, the lanterns were only lit around later on, around five o'clock-ish. These lanterns have already been lit. The lights are all on and people aren't on the streets anymore. And looking up into the sky, you can see really thick, dark clouds overhead. Okay. Stormy clouds? Or just... Roll me knowledge nature. Oh, okay. It will be a ten. Yeah, with them... Because only ten's about an average human, you could say that, yeah, they do look like storm clouds. Would I also notice this, being as that I'm from Nefalia? Uh, bear in mind that you rolled a six. No. no. And bear in mind... <laughs> I rolled a three. My lid is back then. <laughs> <laughs> visor's shut again. Even his visor's shut up for the night. It's, it's got a slightly wedged and you're just trying to open it, but you might need some WD-40 or something on that. <laughs> okay. I kept some of that wax. <laughs> so, it's worth relaying to the group. I think, I'm not going to make a big deal about it, but I'm just going to sort of, oh, it's uh, be quiet around here all of a sudden. There's all the merchants and all the hustle and bustle just... Died down. I look around and ah, oh, yeah, that's interesting. I thought everything was open a bit later around here. Um, oh, not again. Oh. I'm going to lift my visor up. This damn visor keeps falling out. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, it wasn't like this yesterday, was it? No, not at all. Um, perhaps they've got half day closing. Maybe. <laughs> No, maybe we should uh, walk around a bit more warily. Oh, right. Well, anyway, I'm going to carry on down the street. I'm going to walk around, heading in the direction that he indicated to look for this other, well, look for another tavern. Yeah. Is this, so if I've got this right, we're heading more towards the church direction? We yeah, have. you're starting to come around this kind of curve here where the uh, kind of this wall for the noble district curves around. Okay, yeah. You're heading around this curve now and you're approaching the turn off up to okay. up this promontory. Okay, yep. Okay, and now that you've been aware that the shops are shut, you're all paying a bit closer attention to what's going on around you. And both Kewin and Delora, you can both feel that, yeah, something is not right. You can't tell what it is, but it's just that feeling you get when 
no, it's just, no, something's not right. Almost like a static charge in the air. It's, it feels like the oncoming of a thunderstorm, like like heavy, oppressive weather. I'm going to turn to Kieran and say, oh, hang on a minute, I, I think... <sighs> This weather's looking a bit funny. It might be another one of these storms. I don't want to get caught in that again. I was soaked the other night. Um, uh, yeah, and yeah, you want to watch if it's a storm because, well, you're wearing a lot of metal. Mm, yeah, so uh, um, maybe we should get a uh, bit of a clip on and, and try and find uh, somewhere to uh, um, get indoors. Yeah, perhaps, really? it, perhaps it will be an early dinner. Yes, yes. Um, hmm. uh, uh, Okay, but uh, um, which way should we go? Galore? Well, um, can we'll, it, can we'll anybody carry... can anybody see a tavern? Can you can you see? Can we see a tavern? Not a tavern in sight. Okay, yeah. well we carry along the road. But as we... you're looking for this tavern, sorry to interrupt. If you want to roll me a spot check, all of us. Yeah, all of you. I assume you're all looking for a tavern. Oh, piss off! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a thirteen all in from Alora. A 15 all in from Ogva. Five all in. <laughs> uh, okay. So, as you're walking along, you're looking for a tavern. Kieran, you can feel your visor starting to slip again. It's not dropping fully down, but you can feel it just... Can I hear this? Yeah, it's, it's it needs some oil. I'm going to turn to Kieran and say, You know what? In the morning, mate, you need to get that sorted. Yes. Um, there's a blacksmith somewhere here, so... I'll, um, yes, I... I, I it's starting to annoy me now. Mm-hmm. It's annoying me, I can hear it. <laughs> okay, and who rolled the 15? It was you, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, okay, and both Elora and Ogvar, out of the corner of your eye, something you've noticed as you've been walking down the street also is that all of the windows and doors, the doors are shut, and the windows have been closed, so like they've got wooden shutters over the windows. All of these are wooden, they're all shuttered up. Is there, get, any, is there anybody on the street at all? There is nobody on the street. The streets are empty. And you can just see through some of these gaps in these shutters where they're like um, layered over each other. There's bits of light coming through. But there's no one on the street. And as you're kind of, you've taken note of this, you've gone, oh, that's a bit weird. There's no one around, everything's shut up. That's odd. It wasn't like this last night. You see one of the shutters open very quickly on your right hand side as you're walking, uh, sorry, left hand side as you're walking up the street. And it's on the first floor, so it's above the ground, it's not on the ground floor, sorry, it's the second floor. And a woman pokes her head out. I'm going to look up at the woman and say, uh, oh, excuse me, can, why is everything shut up? What's going on? What are you doing on the streets? I don't know, shouldn't we be? No! Why? Why Why shouldn't we be here? Dangerous! Get inside, quickly! Get inside where? We're looking for a tavern. A f- nearest tavern's ages away. Get to the church. Go to the ch- church. will take you in. Get there. Quickly. Go. And she just slams the window. It goes bang as it shuts. Well, I'm going to look very confused. I'm going to look at Ogvar and Kieran and say, well, I don't know what that was about, but something's telling me that we perhaps need to do as we're told. Uh, yes. We I- don't know this town, so let's go. And as you're stood there, you hear the first kind of rumble. You could say it's a rumble of thunder. But it just, it doesn't sound right. It okay. sounds odd. Really odd. You can you can say it's thunder, but listening closely, you're like, that that doesn't sound particularly like thunder if you really listen to it. Okay. And as you look up, the storm, these dark clouds, they are properly roiling now. They're twisting over each other. It's bubbling like the inside of a cauldron almost. Right, well, I've never seen this sort of thing before. So at this point, I'm saying, I'm off. I'm going to look at... Kieran and say, Kieran, I think uh, this is your time to shine now. Let's uh, go f- see your friends at the church. Yes, yeah, um, um, it doesn't look the best. I, I suppose we'd better uh, uh, get a trot on. Laugh. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna. So his visor is no longer squeaking, more clanking up the Yeah, he's going clink, 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 clink. I'm gonna look at Alora and go, shall we follow? Well, well I'm gone. I've already gone. Yeah. Okay, so you're all making, you're yes, legging it basically. Yes, I'm, I'm following the clip clip, so I can hardly see. <laughs> getting a very Monty Python with the Holy Grail sort of. <laughs> <laughs> all you can hear from behind you is clunk, clunk, 
As his visor's going up and down as he's running. There's going to be a lot of clanking and clunking going on behind us as he's running. Okay, so as you're travelling down this road and you are now moving fast, you're trying to get to this church, and you turn up this up this really steep hillside, which is going to be fun for you, bear in mind you're wearing scale mail, but as you're going, you are noticing that, yes, the weather is getting worse rat- rapidly and it's starting to drop really, really cold now. Right, I'm breaking into a bit of a run here. Yeah, no you're all running anyways. I'm running now. But can everyone make me a spot check as you go up the promontory? Apparently not. That's a five all in. Oh dear. Fifty all in. <laughs> Be a ten all in, Rob. Right, um, you can all see, with the exception of... Who rolled five you? <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> yeah. What a surprise. <laughs> Laura, you're... <laughs> s- you in the eye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Laura, you're so focused on just legging it that you're just head down and, yeah, one of the corks is bopping you in the face. It's just bouncing off the bridge of your nose. You don't care. You're running. You're legging it. But both Kieran and Ogla, as you travel up this promontory, although it's you've got the uh, you've got a steep hill, the church on the plateau, and then the hill curves round onto a big, prom- like a big flat plateau on the top where there's large buildings, like government buildings almost. Like a second level. Yeah. As you're travelling up and you're going around this curved path, you are able to catch out the corners of almost your field of view uh, to the far right and the to the far left, where you've got the coast kind of away from you. You're both able to see absolutely massive waves just crashing and pounding onto the shore. They are big waves. I mean, you can see them from where you are now, and they are big waves, and they are absolutely hammering the shoreline. They're, not they're down the coast, but you could coast, assume yeah. that they're also in uh, like in the port, but you can't see in front of you. Yeah. Hey, and as you're both running, both Kewan and Ogvar, because you're not taking any notice, both roll me another spot check, please. <laughs> that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ouch. Fifteen. For me. Would you like a cork? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll deal with Ogva first. What running order are we in here? I thought I'd gone first. You're first. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, you're, you're, up, you're up ahead. I am. I'm He's gone. clanking along in the middle, and then Ogva's taking up the rear. Pardon? <laughs> How rude! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Is he smiling? Roll for a, <laughs> roll for a smile. <laughs> roll for enjoyment. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, dear God. Yeah, I, I was going to go nice. <laughs> okay, so Ogva, as you're running along and you're kind of eyeballing, you're, you, you're almost like eyes on stalks, just eyeballing the coastline going, oh my god, a small, very small black object hits you in the eye. Right. Roll, a con- roll a constitution save. Constitution save would be... Saving save, yeah. yeah. That would be a t- nine. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> you take oh what you take one point of damage and you get a negative one on your spot check until you have a long rest as a large blue bottle <laughs> smacks you in the eyeball <laughs> oh the fated Innistrad blue bottle again it's been whipped around by this storm and this cold and this air and it just goes onto your eyeball minus, three, uh, minus one perspective yep until you have a long rest your eye kind of it puffs up and it stings and it's your eyes just watering and swelling so that's why you get the negative in the spot check um, but this is an industry blue bottle and they're notoriously nasty little things okay meanwhile Kieran as you're eyeballing these wet massive waves the very first flash of lightning illuminates the sky and you follow this the, this fork of lightning as it travels down from the sky and it illuminates these cresting waves and as it illuminates the largest wave you can see you can see the outline the shadow of what appears to be a massive thing you can't say what it is but it's, it's a thing it's almost as if it's uh, time stopped for a second you get that kind of pause in time when you look at it and you're like what is that and the, when you look at it, it almost gives you the impression with this wave being backlit that it's almost encased in glass or frozen in ice. It's, it's that kind of look. And then it moves. You can't tell whether it's uh, it's got the, this serpentine movement as it shifts inside this wave which is illuminated. And then the lightning's gone and you can't see anything else. Did you see that? It seemed like something in the waves. No! I'm running. I'm gone. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> 
and Ogvar's just running the back with his, his hand over his eye going, Oh, I didn't see anything! <laughs> I can't hear you, I'm up ahead! I'm up below, I think I saw something in the waves, it seemed moving. I can't hear him, I'm running. Yeah, you're, yeah you're from, from behind him, just the hand on my eyes, here. don't worry about it, go in, just, just get to the church! <laughs> at this point you're getting close to laughing him because he's it's almost stopped <laughs> at this. Mm. Okay, mm. something's not right, something's not right. Okay, right, 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 right. I'll catch up. So I'm going to take one last look yep. and just carry on. Yep, okay. So you don't see anything, the lightning's gone now. Okay, so Laura, as you're up front, as you start getting onto this uh, plateau, it starts to flatten out so you're no longer running uphill. The, the weather has got significantly worse, you've now got lightning crashing down everywhere. The doors are thrown open to the church and there's an old heavily scarred woman who's who's standing there and she goes in you go love quick in you go well i'm literally going to belt through the doors and I, obviously i'm heavy breathing by this point because i've just run yeah. uphill so i'm heaving but i will belt straight in yeah. through the doors i'm not even going to look as back. you pass by her you feel her hand her hand on your back just kind of like pushing you in and she looks she goes hurry up you lot hurry up come on hurry up am i still behind queuing at this point you're level with him you've okay. caught up Last push, come on, hey! How big are these doors? Are we both going to fit through? Side beside. Ah, uh, 50, pick me a 50% increment. Oh no, you're going to get wedged in the door. <laughs> uh, 50%, we'll go 25 to 75. Okay. As you get up towards the doors, she's only opened the one door. It's like a, a kind of like a single door. There's, there's big double doors, but she's only opened a single door. Okay. And she's only opened it large enough to get one person through. So you're both running. You've got a decision to make. Make it now. Uh, 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 no, you, you go first. I'll, I'll bring up there. Okay. And as I'm just like shoulder barge in front. <laughs> yeah. Me first. As you shoulder barge him, his uh, his visor goes clank down again. <laughs> I say. It's all gone dark. <laughs> and you both get in, and she ushers you in almost boots you through the door and then just slams the door and you are now inside the church okay. you're all out of breath heaving you've just sprinted from up, up a really nasty steep incline so what would you like to do well when i've got a bit of breath back and i can i uh, i'm going to turn around to the woman and go what 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 is going on what what is going on outside she goes oh you must not be local then that's the Nebelgast. A Nebelgast? What, what is one of those? I'll tell you in a minute. Come on, go, we'll go to my private quarters. Get you dried off, get you warm again. It's not nice out there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very Thank you. Oh. Hey. And she starts leading you, and as she passes by, you get a good view of what she looks like. She's got silvered, silvered hair. She looks quite old, maybe over her fi- uh, in mid-50s kind of range. And she's got creases which hang really heavily on her face. You can see that she's had a lot of wear and tear over the years. Uh, makes it sound like a tyre, that does. But <laughs> <laughs> Uphill paper she's, she's had a She's had a difficult life, you could probably imagine. A few good years. Now. Yeah. She stands quite tall, even though she looks old. She stands tall and proud, and she's got a really strong posture. <laughs> That's gone all up the inside of his visor. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) That's what divine inspiration sounds like. (laughs) So she's got this. She's got a quite rigid posture. You you can say that you know she's trained with the sword. She's got a a posture about her which makes her love this like aura of authority. She's dressed in practical clothes. She's got knee-high leather boots with sturdy soles on them, well-worn leather breeches, and a thick woven white shirt tucked into the waistband. She also appears to be wearing what seems to be a handcrafted blanket, shawl, scarf hybrid. It's, it's difficult to say what it is. She's wearing it like a shawl, but it's about the size of a blanket, but mm, could be anything. Okay. Looks like it's handcrafted, basically. It has what appears to be a... Um, a kind of border, hand embroidered border of Avacyn's collar around the edge in gold thread. It looks really warm and thick and fluffy and you can see why she's wearing it because it is absolutely freezing at the moment and this church is cold, it's obviously not heated. Uh, There are a couple of braziers in the corners, some candles lighting the place but it's 
cold, empty and echoing. Okay. okay. And we're all following her yep. up to her quarters at the moment. Or make me a spot check, please. Oh, you dick. Um, what? It was on a natural 20 and then it just went... Two plus <laughs> She's got three. That'd be a 16 all in from Alora. Oh, well, I've got a nine all in. So the only one out of you lot not- who notices is Alora. And you notice as she turns in this big, fluffy, shawl moves, you can see that on her waist, previously concealed by this blanket, is a long sword. Okay, I'll make mental note of that. Where where are we going? Oh, still, I was, oh God, I can't, I'm soaking wet and I'm... Oh. So she's she's leading you through the church. And you notice all this as she kind of passes you and Am I soaking off. wet? She didn't say it was raining, did she? Well, it's, it's thundering. You're cold anyway. You, you're cold and it's not you ha- it's not pleasant for you. You've been... It's been freezing outside. It's like a rapid freeze. Um, so you are cold, yeah. So she leads you through the church, and she leads you to the back corner where one of the um, where one of the little alcoves is, and it, it's got a staircase in there, and it leads up to a almost like a corner tower. Mm-hmm. And she leads you up there, and she opens the door, and it opens up to a really warm, inviting room, like a sitting room. And there's a big crackling fire going, and there's blankets everywhere. This is her personal quarters, and she kind of she sits you down. And she goes, "Wait there, I'll go get some cocoa or coffee." Okay. Coffee for me, please, if that's okay. There would be much go go. Sorry. Okay. And she disappears off, and you're left there, just kind of warming up by the fire as she goes to make you some drinks. I'm going to go and sit down in front of the fire and try and just warm up a little bit. I'm yeah. going to take off my helmet, and I'm going to try and oil it a little bit and yeah. sit. Yeah, I'm going to stand by the fire as well, do the old uh, hands behind your back and try try and warm your hands and your bum at the same time. Yeah. I must do something with this helmet. I'm going to see if I can uh, improve the visor a little bit. Right, just a moment, Kieran. I've got something that might fix that temporarily. I'm going to reach into my backpack, obviously put my backpack on the floor, reach onto, into my backpack, and I'm going to pull out... I've got, um, I've got a fish hook, right. and I've got a bit of thread. Right. I'm going to thread the fish hook, Okay. and I'm going to attach the fish hook to the front of his visor... And I'm going to tie the thread to the back of his visor to just keep his you visor mean the back up. Of his helmet. The back of his helmet, yeah, to yeah. keep his visor, just hold it in place, stop it flapping down over his face every five minutes. Do I need to? I suppose I'll have to roll dex check for that, won't I? <laughs> um, or not? I'm not sure what to go with this because I'm thinking craft, but then it's not really a craft. It's it's just a roll me an intelligence check for that. Mm. Yeah. That's a three. Yeah, you kind of grab his helmet off him and you start fiddling around with this fish hook and whatnot, but you can't figure out how to tie the knot properly to get the fish hook to kind of stay on the th- on the thread. Mm. And then when you pull the thread over the back and you eventually manage to kind of secure it roughly, you realise there's nowhere really to tie this bit of string through. It's 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 a helmet. Right. Okay, well, I'll pack up my stuff, put it back in, and I'll just say to him, well, it was an idea, but it's obviously not going to work. So I hand, I'll just hand him his helmet back his helm back well, I'm going to try and because I've got armour I just have to craft in it yeah have you got an armour maintenance kit yeah okay that gives you a plus two yep okay roll for that then 16 is that with your plus two or is that yeah okay and you've got all your modifiers added in yeah yeah I've only got the plus two okay so you've got 16 all in yeah yep okay so with the 16 all in you yeah, you managed to uh, tighten up some of the. I don't know, maybe tightening, loosening up. You, you fiddle with kind of like the bolts securing your visor to your helmet. It's not a perfect fix. It won't last that long, but you've kind of tightened up one side and loosened the other, and it seems to kind of be working now at the moment, temporarily. But you can tell that with any kind of harsh movement, it's probably going to work the bolts loose again. So you probably need to take it to someone who's uh, trained in armour to get it fixed properly. <laughs> But you, st- you sit there and you kind of poke it around and the visor stays up when it's supposed to be up and it comes down when you get it down. So it's a win for you at that it's point. Just, just good. <laughs> yep. So a couple of minutes have gone past and she returns and she's got a couple of thick blankets hooked over the crook of her elbow in one hand and she's got a plate of cookies in that hand and she's got a couple of mugs in the other. And she, she goes, oh, sit, 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 sit. Go on, sit. Well, I'm just going to sit sit down by the f- fire yeah. on the floor. 
and I turn and say to her, Well, thanks for your hospitality. Um, I'm still not sure I understand any of this, but um, well, well, let's start with what is your name? My name's Alora. Okay, as you say this, she's busy handing out, she's put a plate of cookies in the, kind of the middle of the room on a low table, and she's handing out mugs of cocoa, so you get a cup of cocoa and so do you, Ogva. She's got one for herself and she gives Q in a strong coffee. And she then starts draping blankets over you. She's very motherly in that sense. You, you almost get this. She's just draping blankets over you, going, Oh, warm up, love. There we go. We're giving you a rub on the shoulder. That's much appreciated. Thanks very much. And she goes, Oh, well, it's, it's lovely to meet you, uh, Elora. My name's Esther Aziz. You can just call me Esther. Oh, well, it's nice to meet you, Esther. Um, you know, thanks for your hospitality again. Um, we were planning on coming up here, but not until the morning, and we were... We were just wandering around town looking for for somewhere to stay, um, but I, I don't really understand what just happened. Can you can you explain what what's going on outside? Yeah. Okay, so as you're all kind of looking at her, obviously as she's gone round handing out this cocoa and whatnot, you've all had a good look at her face, and you can see that although she's got heavy creasing on her face, every single bit of skin you can see is heavily scarred. Her hands are scarred, and her like her neck is scarred. And the one particular feature is there is a scar which runs from her chin all the way to her temple on her right hand side of her face and it just kind of runs like that upwards almost like she's been slashed with a sword and that's quite a prominent feature of her face. But she, she takes a seat and she kind of arranges her big blanket cloak around herself and she says, well, she says, I'm, I'm this church's warden. The, unfortunately for you, you, uh, you got caught out in the uh, Nebelgast. I, I can see from your faces that you're, you're not aware what that is. No, no. Uh, what exactly is it out there? Uh, well, it's it's commonly more it's more commonly known, and uh, you you might know it as the breath of the sleepless. And you can make me a knowledge local role, Elora. That's an eleven, all in. Yeah, you've you've heard something about this before, but you're more inland than on the coast where you grew up. So it's not something you've really ever heard much of. You've heard tales of it during your day, during your time on ships and whatnot, but it's not something you've really ever experienced before. She goes, well, this uh, so-called Breath of the Sleepless, it, it lingers along the length of Nefalia's coastline, and you know it, it, it seemed to occur more often recently. I don't know why, but it used to appear every couple of times every month it used to roll in land fully but nowadays it's quite common there was one not just the other day there was an awful one it was uh, terrible yeah, I think that's a, could possibly have been the one that we got caught out in can I ask you a question no yeah, of course um, as we were running up here don't you think you should introduce yourself Kieran oh, 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 sorry <laughs> sorry I'm just thinking uh, yeah I'm, I'm Kieran de Greymont uh, uh, um, a paladin of a glorious church. Um, um, as, as I was saying, um, on the way up here, I, I, I saw one of the flashes uh, over in the waves, and it seemed to be something, I don't know, maybe it was a trick of the light, but it seemed to be something in the waves. Very weird. But nobody else saw it, so... As you say that, you can almost see she pales slightly and her hand, her right hand trails up almost to brush her chin where the scar is. And it's, it's a very subtle thing, you barely catch it. And she goes, oh, um, no, I, no. Anyways, the, uh, the, the Nebelgast, it's, uh, it's, uh, you, I'm sure you've all heard of the Fogs of Nefalia. Have you? Fogs of Nefalia. Fogs. Oh, fogs. Fogs, the fogs. dear, fogs. Sorry, fo- fogs and me. I'm sorry, I've still got... She just nods and sighs a bit. Oh, yes, um, well, the fogs of Nefalia, they, they are magical fogs which surround this coastline. But they, they, they are magical in the sense that they harbour geists. Most of these geists in the Nebelgast, they, they're commonly referred to as Nebelgeists. Quite a funny little nickname if you ask me, Nebelgeists. But they are they are the lingering spirits of Nefalian people. Y- y- I'm sure you, uh, Q- Kuin, was it? You, Kuin, as a paladin, you you know a lot about Geist. You've been trained by our church, and I'm sure of that. 
you would have been yes, part yeah. of your, your training. They, uh, they, they, they're the ghosts, the, the spirits of people who've not yet passed on to the, uh, the, the other, the other, that's, that's the word, I know, the other. They, they linger due to resentment and they embass in these sea fogs and it's quite a terrible shame. A lot of people die with regrets around here. Uh, but th these common guys, these nebble guys, there were, there were other types as well. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of them. There's nibblest geists and uh, you, you look quite chilly. They're, they're probably the cause of that. They're, they, they give, they make chilly winds and they give you the sensation of cold hands. They're not very pleasant creatures. And they, you, sometimes when you look into the fogs deeply, you can see these big skulls and, uh, the worst ones over the the Sturm geist. So she 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 kind of listens out a bit, and she she says, "I think this might be a Sturm geist storm." They they are giant storms, and at this point she goes quiet, and all you can hear outside is wailing. It's it, you you get the banging and crashing of thunder, but you also get the almost like screaming. The wind is screaming, and it's moaning, and you know it sounds like people basically in a lot of pain she goes yes uh i'm gonna flick my eyes towards the window and pull a face like a pained expression she says yes it's it's not very present pleasant but it's a uh, part of life here in nefalia in Janelle as well it's it's a common part at the moment For some reason it's happening more often than ever before but why have i never why have i never come across this Things I've travelled up and down Nefalia. Well, I did say you've heard rumours of it in the boats, but they oh, won't okay. take the boats out if this is going on, and right, obviously okay. you grew up in land. Okay. It's, it's it's not safe to be outside in in this weather. It's lucky you you got in in time. Um, ghosts are tricky beings. Some of them are there to protect people, and they they protect their families, their ancestral. That some of them are good ghosts, but some of them, like these ghosts in these in in the Nebelgas, they are less than pleasant they they will do anything to try and possess a body and the effects it has on a human are not pleasant there's a uh, only few people will travel out in these kind of storms and they're not people you want to associate with particularly they're quite disturbed people and she kind of trails off and her eyes kind of she wanders the window and she looks out the window and if you want me a spot check that's a ten all in. Nine all in. Twelve all in. Yeah, you can all kind of, from where you're stood, you can all kind of crane your head around and look out the window and you can see what she's described. You can see almost like these massive fog clouds, which the closer you peer at them, the more they appear to be like skull shaped. You can see where the eye sockets would be and open leering mouths. And it's not very pleasant to look at at all. Okay. So what would you like to do? She's kind of trailed off at this point. She's cradling a mug in her hands and just staring off out of the window. I'm going to have a bit of a, a drink of my cocoa, help myself to a biscuit, just process what she's saying a little bit. Um, I'm going to wonder to myself how I've not managed to come across this sort of thing on my travels, but I, obviously looking out the window, I don't disbelieve what's going on I mean obviously you know what goes on that these things kind of exist make me a wisdom roll please a wisdom roll and that will be a 16 okay with that wisdom roll you're thinking about how how could I have never have heard of these massive storms before and as you think about it, it it kind of draws your attention to yes you have heard of these massive fog clouds before you've heard of them and when you're on the boats, the boats won't go out while these fog clouds are around. And you mostly stay holed up in a tavern with a load of ale, so that might be why you've never really paid much attention to it, because you've probably been too drunk. But you pick up on something she said, and she said that they only used to happen once or twice a month, and that the frequency of these storms has increased. So you could probably say that if it's only happening once or twice a month, you might consider it just a normal storm. It's not something you'd ever really consider to be geists, in that sense. Right, having processed that information, um, I'm just going to look to the others and say, 
Well, I guess that I guess that this is going to be where we're residing tonight. How, how long? How long do these sort of things normally last, Esther? Well, is it an all-night thing, or with with the bigger ones like this, it yes, all night usually. You're you're more than welcome to stay. I've got some spare rooms and thick blankets. I'll I'll get some dinner on the go. I'm, I'm more than happy. I I could do with the company. Avacyn knows I spend enough time here on my own. Oh, that's that's very good of you, Esther. Yeah, much, much appreciated. Thanks, Esther. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I had heard of these gas before, but I didn't realise uh, the severity. Y- yes, it's. I mean, places like Thraben, uh, they, they don't really experience the full power of these, of the Nebel gas, because they don't come here often. I mean, the, the church's presence is not appreciated in Junau as it is. Not because we're uh, anything bad to them, but because, you know, as long as we're providing trading points, they don't mind, but I don't interfere in the business, and I'm the only one left here now. There's, you, there's... You're in this church on your own. Yes, I'm, I'm the only one here. I mean, my, my daughter was lost to... My daughter was lost to some ghouls many years ago, and... My grandson, he's gone off and he was supposed to be returning soon to Junau to take over my post here as I retire, but he's he's a wild child, you could say. He's always in trouble. Oh, I'm really sorry about your family problems. Oh, That's don't, don't nice. let me burden you as an old woman talking. He should be here soon, hopefully. Well, how long have you been here? Oh, well, I started training when I was... 16, so... Well, I'm... And you've been here all this time? I'm 55 now, so... Wow. I'm part of the furniture here, you could say. Wow. I would love to adventure, though, one day. But... Who knows? Wow. So you haven't really got that much keep in you here, then? No, not really. Just need to make sure that the church gets handed over to its... to the next warden, and then I can go. I can... live my life. Wow. Okay. Not that I haven't had one with the church, I've had my fair share of adventures and stories, but and you can see her face light up as she reminisces about these adventures and stories that she's all got in her head and all this. She said, but I would like to wander freely, of course with protection, because nobody wants to be leaving on their own, but I would like to wander freely. I noticed that, um, if you don't mind me saying, I don't want to appear rude, that you've got a rather nice-looking sword there on your side underneath your blanket or cloak I just wondered why do you always wear one? always always have a sword on you it's the first thing you've got to remember in Innistrad always be armed she kind of lights up her nose she leans forward and you can see the excitement cross her face and it makes her look a lot younger than she actually is I take it you know how to use it then she gives you a sharp feral grin almost she's all yes Oh, obviously you've got some stories to tell then. She smiles at you and she leans back. She goes, I'll go get some supper on, shall I? Yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you very much. Do you need any help? Oh, it'd be greatly appreciated if you fancied fancied helping, as long as you're warm, that is. I know the chill. My old bones feel that chill right well. Uh, I should just take off my uh, plate. Make me warm a lot more, so to say. So, she's still in the room with us? Yeah, she's kind of wandering off towards the side door, which you can assume leads out to a kitchen. Okay, um, uh, excuse me, Esther, before you go, um, you said these uh, Neville gas uh, are having a lot more often now? Yes, yes, they, they are. Uh, it's, it's, it is, it's quite worrisome. But there's not much I can do against the power of a storm. When, when did they start increasing? Frequency. Oh, uh, it's got to be a couple of months ago now. They were once or twice a month, but and a lot shorter. Less, they didn't come as far. The fog didn't roll as far inland, and now it blankets the entirety of you now. And how long did you say you've been alone in this church for? Oh, Father, Father Peterson died. Oh, it must be about ten years ago now. 
just been me ever since. Okay. I keep on asking for more Cathars to help out, and they promise they're coming, and they, they never do. Okay. So um. she's on her way out into the kitchen. She's disappeared through a little side door, um, supposedly to the kitchen. What would you like to do? Do you like to play rock, paper, scissors for who goes to the kitchen? <laughs> I'm well, I'm not going to the kitchen. I'm, I don't do cooking, you know. Ogvar, oh, you're a man of the woods. You must be used to doing stuff like that. Well, I do a little when, when I have to. We've seen we've seen Kieran's efforts with a wolf, so we won't bother with him. Doesn't look like I've got much choice, really, does it? Okay, Ogvar, oh, have a nice time in the kitchen then. Make it yeah, sound nice. Shout if you need me. No, no real problem. <laughs> no, really, Ogvar, uh, don't shout for him. <laughs> okay, so I will uh, walk across the kitchen door. Yep. Yeah. So you wander in, and she's busy prepping a meal, and she kind of says to you, oh, 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 if you could chop those dearie, that'd be great. Gives you a kitchen knife, sends you off with some carrots to chop them and that's that. You just give her a hand out in the kitchen. Oh, okay. Hello. Uh, um, if she's been here by herself for you know, what, six, ten years or whatever, uh, surely she'd be who uh, Katrina came to see. Uh, I want to know. That's a good question. It'd be worth asking. Yes. Well, hang on a minute. If she came up to here and she's the only occupant, then yeah, you're right. It must have been. So yes. she obviously has spoken to Katrina. Yes. When I, when I get back in, um, maybe we, I'll, I'll start a conversation and try and lead her towards that. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. It might sound better coming from you as well. Yes. It is your mission after all. I'm just here to help. Yes, true, true. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so some time goes by in the kitchen. I managed to find like a chef's hat at this point. <laughs> <laughs> He's found an apron. Do, do I have a pinny on? What's on the pinny? <laughs> Kiss a <of> cook. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably an apron with a loincloth for the woods, isn't it? <laughs> Five percent increment for the chef's hat. Uh, Fifty-five to sixty. 51. <gasps> oh. Q in, increment, 5%. Apron. 88 to 5. 64. Oh. No. No, you don't have a chef's hat or an apron, unfortunately. She's uh, fresh out of them. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you've helped her, you've prepped a meal, and um, she's just done a quick meal. And you've. Uh, give, you give me a hand carrying the plates out. Can do. Yep. So you walk out and you've all got omelettes. Oh, nice. That's terrific. Thank you very much. I'll tuck into that because um, she's really hungry. Laura's really hungry. You eat the omelettes and they are nice omelettes. While you're eating, while you're all eating your omelettes, um, she wanders around the edge of the room and she's finished her omelette. She's finished her dinner. She pops it and she she, she peers at, peers at your eye, Ogvar. Oh, yes. And she casts Cure Light Wounds to heal you up eight points. Oh, nice. It's coming back to full health then. And then she casts two more times on both of you, Cure Light Wounds. So, eight for you, Kieran. Back Yep. And four for you, mm. Elora. I'm also back up yeah, to nice. five. Okay. So she's healed you fully and she just gives you kind of like a, a warm smile and she starts cleaning up the plates and taking them back out to the kitchen. I'm just going to nod at her. And... She just she smiles at you and she comes back and she settles herself back down by the fire and you can say it's probably about six o'clock now. And she sits down and she looks at all of you and she goes, well, is there anything you'd like to know? Cumin finally filled his companions in on the vital missing quest information. A violent, ghastly storm swept into the city, leaving our heroes seeking sudden shelter. They beat a hasty retreat up the promontory path to the church, and were warmly welcomed by Esther the Warden. Hello there, listeners. Ongvar here. Making this podcast is mighty hard work, but also very most enjoyable. If you could help us out by buying us an ale and a goat dinner, that would be just fantastic, as they are very pricey around these parts we've found. The details for all of this are in the bio of the podcast below. Thank you all from the D&D Podcast UK. Bye-bye.
Thank you for listening to our podcast. Having you as a listener means everything to us. So, whichever streaming service you choose to listen to us with, please give us a like, subscribe and follow. We would love for you to join us on our Facebook or Twitter page, where you can catch up with all of our latest news. While you're waiting for the next episode of Secrets of the Silver City, why not pop over to our website, where you can read all of the information about this campaign, from backstories to setting. All of the links are in the bio of this episode. Join us again next week for the next instalment. Thank you for listening.